The RCMP has opened an investigation of reported allegation intimidation targeting Honorable Michael Chung and has contacted the Commission of Canada Elections regarding other allegations that have, to light, that have come to light that fall under the mandate and has offered its assistance. The RCMP is investigating reports China tried to intimidate Conservative MP Michael Chong and his family. The CBC's Rafi Bujikanian has been on this for us today. He joins me now in the studio. So, Rafi, what more did we learn today from the National Police Force when they testified at committee? You know, David, it's pretty rare for the RCMP to actively confirm an open investigation like that. And so when they did that in front of committee today, it just sort of suggested the amount of pressure public security bodies are facing on this issue. You'll recall Michael Chong's name came up in the Globe and Mail in May when uh, the newspaper reported that a uh, Chinese diplomat was seeking information on his family members in uh, Hong Kong and was targeting him for his public stance, uh, kind of uh, standing up for the rights of Uyghurs in China. That right. report also, of course, was partly based on a memo written by CSIS two years ago that uh, said a number of MPs were being targeted without naming them. We since learned uh, from two MPs, NDP MP Jenny Kwan and former Conservative leader Aaron O'Toole, that uh, they were briefed by CSIS on this matter too, that they were targeted. And so the RCMP said that it had reached out to the Commissioner of Canada Elections and had talked to them about Kwan and O'Toole and asked if they wanted any information, any help from the RCMP. Kwan reacted to all this today. For my name to be thrown around uh, at committee by the RCMP and, and, and other members, um, you, you know, every time that happens, it kind of makes you pause, right? Uh, it's disturbing to know that there's this ongoing situation, which is why I think it is so important that we have a public inquiry. The RCMP also said that it is looking into more than 100 cases of foreign meddling. Now, not all of those involve politicians. Some are about academic institutions and intellectual property theft. And they've also said that they've shut down up to eight of these so-called Chinese police stations that are on can Canadian soil illegally um, harassing members of diaspora communities. Right. But the key distinction of the Michael Chong case is now a criminal investigation right, Precisely. by the RCMP. So that's interesting because they, they, we heard from the... the commissioner today, but also the House Committee also heard from the former National Security Advisor. What did that testimony focus on? So that infamous memo was at the center of the testimony about with Rob Morrison. Morrison would have been in charge of briefing the Prime Minister on national security matters when that memo was written up. So a lot of the questions to him were around the idea of, well, why did you not pass this memo on? Uh, he said that it was for informational purposes only, and it was clearly uh, indicated to him that he did not need to take an, any kind of further action on briefing the prime minister on it. The report was never intended to spur action by readers, whether around targeting MPs or any of the other examples of foreign interference it lists. It was not a memorandum for action. It was a report for awareness. David, the, I will say the opposition MPs on the committee appear to have a hard time believing that. Uh, Morrison really stuck to it. Um, we do know that the committee will be hearing from CSIS, from Director David Vigneault, in the next couple of hours. So no doubt a lot of questions there will be asked too about why this memo was written this way and uh, not asked to be passed along to others. Okay, Rafi, thanks so much. That's the CBC's Rafi Bujikanian. So what does an RCMP investigation look like into a matter like this? Pierre-Yves Bordeaux served as the RCMP Deputy Commissioner from 2005 to 2008, and he joins me now. P.Y., good to talk to you. Uh, good afternoon, David. I, I think the last time we spoke, we had a big conversation about the difficulty in taking intelligence and turning it into evidence. But now we hear from the RCMP, they've started Correct. a criminal investigation into what happened with Michael Chong. What do you think has happened there? What do you make of that development? Well, it's uh, rather interesting uh, that the, both the commissioner and deputy commissioner confirmed that indeed there's sufficient evidence to turn this into a criminal investigation. However, uh, it's a marked difference between gathering evidence and presenting this uh, in front of the, uh, of the court. So they have uh, their work cut out for them uh, in order to meet sufficient uh, witnesses uh, and gather sufficient evidence uh, to be able to present to prosecutors to ensure that there's enough traction uh, to present this uh, before the court. But the RCMP was also quite uh, 
they express a lot of challenges with regards to uh, Chinese interference here in Canada because notwithstanding all of the political drama, they've also indicated that they have over 100 uh, different investigation involving academia, university, uh, looking at uh, the, these types of interference also in the academic milieu there. Yeah, but, uh, on the Michael Chong thing, though, I, I just wonder how likely is it you think that this could lead to criminal charges? It's one thing to open the investigation, but the central actor is a diplomat who's been expelled, who would have had diplomatic immunity, for example. So what is the probability of a criminal charge coming out of this, do you think? Uh, there's a couple of elements there. Of course, what happened domestically, the RCMP can gather hopefully enough evidence to s s substantiate uh, the claim by uh, Mr. Chang. But also what happened uh, uh, in, in other countries, because uh, there was some allegation that uh, his family was targeted as well uh, in uh, China and Hong Kong. So therefore, uh, for the RCMP to gather evidence in a, in a foreign country remains a challenge. And uh, they might be able to rely to some uh, of their liaison officers that are stationed internationally, but it remains to be a challenge uh, operationally for the RCMP. An investigation like this that deals with MPs and people who have spoken out about foreign interference, how does that, how does that color any sort of process or investigation uh, from the police standpoint? How does it change the way that the work is conducted, or does it? Well, it's, it's a political minefield, David, and, and the RCMP needs to navigate in there. And there's also the fact that CSIS and the RCMP have uh, evidence. CSIS is strictly for intel purposes, but... Uh, and it was clearly indicated today that uh, sometimes there are gaps in intelligence sharing by the RCMP and CSIS, and the gaps need to be filled. So, again, uh, political minefield and gap on the intel front are challenges that uh, they need to meet head on. Okay, the political minefield is something they're going to have to navigate on this no matter what. But the gaps between intelligence and evidence, I mean, how do you fill that gap, as you say, it needs to be done? Well, it needs to be uh, uh, done in, in an open, with an open uh, mind, mm -hmm. but uh, CSIS has a strict mandate and the RCMP is more or less focused on bringing evidence before the court. So there needs to be an agreement here between the CSIS intel and the RCMP mandate in order to ensure that they'll be able to get some information from CSIS and be able to bring this information in front of the court. And of course, we all know that CSIS operate in a, a world where uh, there is information that uh, they are unable to use in front of a court of law. And that remains a challenge for both the RCMP and CSIS. Okay, another challenge that it seems to me would be a challenge is just the sheer volume. You mentioned the number, right? Because the RCMP commissioner said they have more than 100 files open on foreign interference. Yeah. This seems like a lot to me. In your experience, is that a significant number? Is that a lot? It is a lot, but uh, I'm, I'm dating myself here. But uh, many, many years ago, uh, the, uh, the Chinese interference, especially with regards to copyright legislation, and activities of, uh, of Chinese uh, uh, foreign students on campus was already on the radar of the RCMP. So, and the, you have to realize also that the uh, United Front Work Department of the Chinese Communist Party have recruited over 40,000 additional workers where their, their main focus is to stifle criticism uh, internationally infiltrate uh, foreign political party and diaspora's communities around the world. So. Uh, again, the RCMP is faced with this uh, dynamic, both the political uh, environment here and what's happening in China and, and its repercussion in our country because it's, it's clearly affecting our democracy and, and our open society. When they talk about open files, just help us understand that. Is that complaints? Is that active investigations? Is that just a piece of information they have on something? You know, how do we interpret that number? Uh, the way I read this, uh, the RCMP has a, a uh, and they reach out to university to indicate to students that they have a way to, to complain to the RCMP directly. Uh, but then the RCMP needs to seize the information and needs to gather enough information uh, to, to determine whether or not this complaint could be substantiated and then follow up investigations needs to take place. You know, and of course, in a campus environment, uh, when you have uh, these types of, of, of social dynamic, uh, 
Uh, you, you need to be very careful in what you're doing or you're meeting with because there are good Canadian Chinese citizens that uh, just want to go about their business, but then they get this foreign influence and they need to manage this. So the RCMP needs to use a lot of diplomacy in order to ensure that they can glean the evidence that is required in order to pursue these cases in front of the court or at least take some type of action to influence uh, elected official to make decisions such as to expel a diplomat. Uh, just as one final point, we know there's a criminal investigation into the issues surrounding Michael Chong and his family. We know at least two other MPs, Jenny Kwan of the NDP and Aaron O'Toole of the Conservatives, were also targeted by the Chinese government or allegedly targeted by the Chinese government. Those are not criminal investigations. They seem to be being dealt with maybe by the elections bodies. How do you interpret the distinction between the two? What would be the threshold to get it to the criminal investigation stage like with Mr. Chong? Well, the uh, commissioner indicated uh, in his testimony earlier today that uh, he's actually working with the uh, commissioner of the, uh, the election, uh, Canada, to, uh, to offer their services and, and hopefully open some type of communication in order to determine the type of action that could be taken in relation to specific uh, uh, um, offenses that could take place, either by deal with it through regulation or deal with it to uh, a judicial process. So it remains to be seen what kind of, uh, of discussion will ensue in order to ensure that at least we're addressing these serious issues at the appropriate level.